Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 11th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D platform game in Unity 6. This tutorial will be covering a time limit in our level. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. I will also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So creating a time limit, we can actually use elements of what we learned recently and bring them all together to create a time limit from the UI to the death. So how do we do this? Well, let's start by doing what we did with the score. Let's get some UI in place to begin with. So let's go to our current score object, double click, and we should be able to zoom out. And I'm going to take that object and place a time limit over the right side. Now, in order to see things a little better, let's turn off the fade in so we can see. So let's take this raw image, rename it and have it as score cover. Hold control, press D. Let's change this to time cover. Let's change the anchoring to top right. And while we're at it, let's change the score cover anchoring to top left, just to make sure that they do appear correct. Let's now drag this across to round about there. And let's take the current score, hold control, press D, and let's rename this to current time. And let's have this as saying time left. And by default, I'm going to say 30. So 30 seconds to do the level. It's only a very small level. Of course, you'll be able to do it. So let's bring this over to about there. Uh, let's have a look how that looks in game view. Yep, that'll do. Obviously, you take a little bit more time if you need to. But let's make sure we change the anchoring to this to top right as well. So current score, top left. Yep, current time, top right. Same with the covers, all anchored correctly. So now let's create uh, a new object on our screen that says time up in big letters when we've reached time left as zero. And to do that, we can literally take one of these two that we already have, so the current score or current time, Let's hold control, press D, and let's anchor that to dead center, and let's zero out the position to bring it center, and let's say time up, and let's change the alignment to be center, and let's use the rec tool to make this quite a bit larger, bring it back to center, and alignment center again, and let's make this quite large, let's say 120. Time up. Yep, that'll do. So now I want to say, uh, or we'll call this time up. And I want to place this right at the bottom because even when we fade out, I want time up to appear on screen. So I'm going to untick that. And that's uh, a variable that we will add in our script. So how do we make it so as the time will constantly count? Well, that's where we can use the score method to come up with things. So let's create a script now and create all of this together in one. So, new script. And we'll have this as time level. I guess you could call it level time, whatever. Same thing. Uh, and let's head into it. What we'll need to do is we will need to essentially have a couple of variables. And if I go back to the, um, where is it? I forgot what it was now, score control. So we're going to use the same idea here. So effectively, we could copy these lines of code into time level. So let's copy those lines of code from score control and paste them into time level. Let's change what we need here. So we'll change score box to time box. And this doesn't need to be static at the moment. We could have it static, however, later on if we wanted to, I guess, like if you wanted to be able to collect extra time, uh, but we'll get to that if we need to. So for now, let's get rid of that. Let's have serialize field. And uh, I'm gonna have this as an integer. And I'm going to call it um, time left, and by default, we'll make it 30. Let's change score box to time box. And then let's change score to say time left and this to time left. So save that. 
So it's all good and well having our time right there on the screen, but how do we count it down? Well, that's where we use the coroutine. So if we go below the void update and we say I enumerator, and just like last time, it will add the namespace at the top. And we'll call this remove second, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do is yield return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, one. So after one second, what do we do? Well, we say time left minus one. So time left minus equals one semicolon. And what that will do is that when we run the uh, actual thing, the what's called coroutine, uh, it will remove one second. However, we do need to add a bool into this because we need to be able to constantly run it one after the other. And the way we do this is we just go to variables. We say serialize field, bool, and taking second by default will make that equal to false. So that means that in remove second, the very first thing we need to do is say remove, uh, sorry, taking second is equal to true. So that means that we're running this as normal. And after we've taken it, we say taking second equals false. So in void update, we then need to say if, and in brackets, taking second equals false, then we do the following. And that is start coroutine, and in brackets, remove second, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So we got through that script pretty quick, but let's kind of go over what exactly is happening here. This script is always going to be monitoring the time and it's always going to be monitoring if our bool says false. And if it does, we're starting the coroutine, which immediately sets it as true, so it can't run again. And then it waits for a second and then removes a second so it can display up here. And then it resets it back to false. So we reset this all over again. So every second it will reduce. So let's head back into Unity now and just make sure this element works. The next thing to do after that would be to effectively reset the game once we hit zero. So let's have on our level controls, time level onto there. And then we need to go on there and we need to add the time box to it. So we can go to uh, current time, add it there, press play. And we should be able to see time left at 30 when we start and it will reduce every single second once Unity decides it wants to play. So in we go, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, there we go. So we know our timer is working. So let's now input the functions when we want to basically say, oh, it's time to end. It's time to reset the level. And we can use what we've learned from the uh, falling and uh, the, the whole falling routine that we created and basically use that again. So if we go to fall off, uh, we can basically use these variables here. So let's copy these three variables from fall off into time level. Let's go down a couple of lines, paste them here. So instead of fall sound, we're going to have a different sound. We're going to say time up sound and we'll import something in just a moment. Uh, level BGM, yep, we want that to appear. Fade out, yep, we want that to happen. But we also want the words time up to appear. So serialize field, game object, time up, semicolon. So they're the variables that we need for this bit. So how do we make it so as we don't keep taking seconds away? And how does it know when to only do this when we have uh, effectively zero seconds? Well, if we go here, and say if um, time left equals zero, then do the following. And we need to instantly say taking 
time equals true. What this will do is it will prevent us taking any more seconds off the clock. Uh, sorry, that should be taking seconds, shouldn't it? Taking second is equal to true. After that, if we go back to fall off, we can use this same bit here. So we can copy uh, those lines of code and paste them below taking second. And instead of fall sound, obviously we've got uh, time up sound. And we've got the fade in coming on there. And after, sorry, the fade out. And after the fade out, we'll say time up dot set active true semicolon this is also where we need to bring into play the actual level finish bit as well so you can see we're combining many different things here and we need to take this variable here serialize field player control let's place that here as well and we also need these two lines here because we need to stop the player movement and we need to play the idle animation because time is up so let's make sure that we've got everything that we need right here because this script expanded quite fast and I realize that it may seem a little bit confusing. So what we've done is we've added some variables to say, here's our time up sound, here's our level background music, here's the fade out screen, here is our words that say time up, and here is also the player controls. What that means is that if time left is equal to zero, then we need to do the following. We need to stop us doing anything else with the time. That's why we do this line here. We need to turn the background music off. We need to play the time up sound. We need to start the fade out and we need to display time up. And we also need to stop the player from moving. And we also need the player to have the idle animation. The final thing to do is we will go back to what we've done here. So remember this respawn um, component that we had here. What we do is copy that for the um, coroutine. Let's place it below the remove second and we need to add scene management. It's automatically done it. I think because we've just pasted that in it's added scene management up there for us which is fine. And what we need to do here, the very last thing, if time left is equal to zero then we say start coroutine and in brackets respawn. Oh close bracket semicolon and save. So what's going to happen here is that when time runs out, it's going to run through this and it's going to respawn us. So let's head back into Unity. And as always, if you have any problems with this script, it will be available to download in the pinned comment. Give it a moment just to have a quick think there. It is doing it. Don't worry. Don't worry. So let's head back into Unity now after it's compiled and Let's go to level controls and you can see all those variables have now appeared. So we don't have the time up sound in this project just yet, but we'll get it in a moment. BGM can go onto there. Fade out goes onto there. Time up goes onto there. And the player goes onto there. So the final thing to do would be to go to effects and let's import this time up sound. Again, pinned comment, download it. Make sure you do unzip it. Let's go to the fall sound that we had up here, hold control, press D, and we'll say time up sound, and then drag and drop time up onto there, and then scroll down, sorry, scroll up to level controls and just add time up sound to there. And let's save our project just in case. I kind of feel like I probably should have set this as um, 10 or something to begin with. But uh, let's go for 30 seconds and just make sure all of this plays out just nicely. It should do because we've got everything in our sequence of events set out as intended. Obviously, if you were to fall off, it would reset back to 30. But we'll test that in just a moment anyway. So let's play the game. Yep, we can do that. So far, so good. It is amazing how 30 seconds can ultimately feel like a lifetime when you're waiting for it. Let's collect all the gems. Let's collect them all. Okay, so here we go. We're nearly there. We should hopefully see this working and playing out as intended. Ooh. <laughs> okay. 
But either way, there we go. And let's just fall off. Can I glitch there? There we go. So everything resets as intended. Now, if we go to uh, our script, so something happened there that went a little bit crazy. And effectively, it's because time left is equal to zero uh, that it kind of went like a buzzy sound because it was trying to play things repeatedly. So what we'll do is we will say time left equals negative one, semicolon, and save. So what will happen here is that once it hits zero, it'll just set it to minus one. Um, but you would see that in the screen anyway. But this is just a really quick, dirty way of making it happen. I guess we could always use a bool. In fact, do you know what? Yeah, let's use a bool. Let's stop being silly. Let's not be cheap and dirty here. Let's create another bool. Let's have serialize field um, bool and is respawning by default. We'll have that as false. And we'll say time left equals zero. We'll put is respawning equals true. And if time left equals zero, double ampersand is respawning equals false. Then we do it. So we should have the option now of being able to not have that buzzing. But what I'll do is I will change time left to 10. Uh, and we'll do it in Unity as well, just so we're not waiting 30 seconds for it to do whatever it needs to do. And then we can change it back afterwards. So let's make sure that we don't have that glitching buzzing happening. Uh, we should be all good. Unless you want the gl glitching buzzing happening, I guess it's entirely up to you. Uh, right, so once we've done that, we've changed it in the script, but we do need to go to level controls just to make sure it is going to be correct as well. Again, give Unity just a moment to have a think. So let's click on level controls. Let's go to time left, change that to 10 as well. Press play. And just make sure this works. Should do. Well, I hope it will. <laughs> there we go, it's playing now in the game. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. I don't know why I'm counting, you can see it on the screen. Let's see if this works. Excellent, there we go. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna change all this back now um, and that will do the trick. So next time what we'll do is we will look into some lighting and the way lighting works. And we might look at some skyboxes as well, because at the moment, the skybox that we have is just the default blue skybox. And we need it to look a little bit better than that. So we'll investigate what we can do with that. But lighting is an important part of any game, really. And I think getting correct lighting can really add to a game and make it look really, really awesome. Um, so yeah, remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I'll see you in the next one.